Good evening, beloved. Welcome to our Wednesday Bible study. And uh, for those who are listening to us online, uh, if you're in Bombay, uh, you know, you're most welcome for our Sunday services at 11.30. Write to us on Facebook. Our uh, handle is at Beloved Sons of God. And write to us and we'll tell you where we gather. Uh, so it's going to be an awesome time uh, for you to just meet other sons and fellowship with them. So today I have an awesome word. Uh, this is something that I'm personally doing, okay, that God is telling me to do. And so even as he started speaking to me, I thought I'm going to bring it out to you, okay, because we're one body. Uh, so today I titled the message as Take No Thought, okay? Sons don't think, sons are led. So I want you, so I've got a bunch of scriptures down today. I don't have a PDF for you because uh, I was trying to fix my laptop and I got it fixed. So uh, <clears throat> just go with me. There are a few verses that we're going to take. And uh, remember in one of the sermons, I think it's an untouchable, the series of untouchable, I talk about CTS, which is casting the care, taking no thought and speaking. And so I'm, I'm going to share a bit on that. Uh, but I want to start with Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. So just open your Bibles. Okay, if you have your Bibles, just open to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Okay. So it begins with, before it talks about where Jesus talks about not worrying. This is Jesus sitting with his disciples, sitting with, people around him and he's sharing about not worrying, okay? But before we come to that passage, I want us to, to quickly look at verse 24 and, and then look at verse 25, okay? So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 24. Now Jesus is saying, Do, no one can serve two masters. No one can serve two gods. No one can serve two lords, okay? No one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one he will hate the one and love the other or either he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, Jesus is talking about serving, serving two gods here or worshipping two gods. And then suddenly he takes the word serving and then suddenly in verse 25, he talks about and then he says, therefore, therefore, that means therefore is related to the verse above. And he says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry. So how are you serving something else? According to him, what, do, what does he mean by when you're serving somebody, when you're becoming a slave to something is by worrying. That means you're giving all your attention to something when you're worrying. Okay. And so he says, therefore, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Then he says, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the li lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all these things, that means all the things that we read on top, what you will eat, what you will, what you will put on, what you will drink, all the materialistic things. Okay? All these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So I looked this up in Greek, this whole passage in Greek. Okay. And where it says, do not worry, it says, take no thought. That means God is calling taking thoughts and cares the same thing. Okay. And so God is also calling worshiping. It begins by saying that you can't worship two things. You can either worship the world and the things of the world, or you can worship me. That's what he's saying. 
And then he's talking about how are you worshipping is when you're constantly worrying about the things of this world. He's calling that worship. That means you're giving it a lot of your attention. And therefore, in the King James Version, it says, take no thought. Now, I want to show you one thing. Okay, now let's look at, let's look at Adam. When God made Adam, okay, he put him into the finished work. It says that God made the sun, the moon, the stars. He made the trees. He made the garden. And then Adam was put in the garden, in a finished work. Okay, and then God thought for Adam. God told Adam, don't eat out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because the day you eat out of it, you will die. But guess what Adam did? He didn't take God's thought because God had already thought for him. He was just supposed to do what his father said. But how did Adam fall? Is because Adam thought for himself. He took another thought. And so the devil comes to Adam, okay, in the way of a serpent, it says in the Bible, and starts saying, no, did God really say, don't eat out of this tree? No, 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 probably he's, you know, he's not being clear about it. If he said, don't eat out of this tree, you're going to become just like him. And so what did Adam do? He thought for himself. Okay, he didn't listen to the father's voice. He began to think for himself to be his own savior. And he took a thought. Okay. And the minute he took a thought and then he reasoned and thought for himself, he made his own decision for his own life. That's why he fell into the flesh. He, he went in the mind of reasoning. And then his mind of his reasoning, when he took that thought, it led him and he pursued that thought. He, it made him do something that God had said not to do. And he plucked off the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and he fell. And then man fell into a carnal realm. And now, think about this, okay? This is very powerful. And we're going to take some scriptures to see that sons don't think. The reason why you and I don't think is because he is thinking for you. And he is not thinking. He's already thought everything for you. And that's why we're led. Led means you come out of the mind of reasoning. This is very powerful. Okay, we're going to read some things. Adam fell because he thought for himself. As opposed to following the thoughts that somebody else had already thought for him. Okay, now look at this in, let's read Romans 8. Open with me to Romans 8. We're going to take some scriptures. We're going to read through uh, all of these scriptures. And I'm again going to bring at the end something together. So let's just flow, flow with me. Okay. Let's look at Romans 6. So in Romans 6, it says, I'm reading from verse 4. I'm reading from, for those, from verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, that means anything to do with your carnal mind, anything to do with your five senses, anything to do with what you see, what you feel, what you sense, what you hear, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, that means the voice of the father, on things of the spirit, okay? For to be carnally minded, to be fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We're going to go to deeper truths of what it means to be spiritually minded. It means we are not doing our own thinking. It means that in all things a son is led. Okay? Now see this, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Because it will go, the carnal mind of you will go into reasoning. It will go into practical evaluation of certain things. And then that evaluation will come, up, come to a conclusive decision. And God calls that, this decision is death. And this decision is carnal. And it's going to lead to death. It's that reasoning mind of yours. Okay? But listen, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if everyone, anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, that is you. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies to his spirit who dwells in you. God is calling the carnal mind 
whatever mind of reasoning this is going to be, it is going to lead to death. You know, there are many times when I will just analyze the situation and I'll analyze it and I'll analyze it and it'll be good and I'll bring all the conclusions to good. But I still see over a period of time, I again keep analyzing that same thing. And then I realized is because if anything comes from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that means even if it's good and even if I'm going round, it will still lead to death. It gives me no peace. And that's where God wants you to just shut that mind and come out of it, not go by reasoning and calculated decisions and just know that I don't need this. I'm a son and I'm led in all things. This is very powerful truth. You're going to see at the end of this, you're going to see a shift. Okay. If you start doing this and I want you to put this in practice. Okay. Now let's go. Let's read 1 Peter 5, 5. 1 Peter 5, 5. It talks about the devil, right? Goes around seeking whom he may devour like a roaring lion. 1 Peter 5, 5. Okay. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Now see this. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you, that he may lift you up in due time. And then it says, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Again, in Greek, this is casting all your thoughts upon him because he thinks for you. Do you know why you don't keep thinking and worrying? It's because somebody else is thinking on your behalf. You know, I remember for those, you know, who heard my 20-year journey with Jesus when I was in UK, I never figured it out for myself. I saw, even as I went to the UK and you see my journey, that someone else had already thought things out for me. And so I was just going, I was just being led. And where I thought I was lost, I was not lost. It was the father leading me. And I was always at the right place at the right time. Because sons are led. Because somebody else has already thought everything out for me. That's why you see in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, God was leading his children through his word. He told Joshua, go around Jericho seven times. And it looks so foolish to the natural mind. Because someone imagine going around Jericho seven times in this whole, I'm going to take over this whole city. And it seems so foolish is because he didn't want Joshua to think for himself. God has already thought out everything, how he's going to do it. Joshua just had to listen to the father. Just had to listen to the voice. And what was Joshua doing in that? He was being led. He did not allow his carnal mind to come in. He just went by, the father said so, and so I'm just going to do it. Without even thinking it through. And even as they go around Jericho seven times, they blow the trumpet on the seventh time, all the walls come down. And what was God teaching the children of uh, Israel in the wilderness? To just go by the voice, by the word. And so on the sixth day, there will be double manna for the seventh day. So they're not going with their mind understanding, calculations. And if you realize, they really had to take no thought for themselves is because somebody else had already thought everything for, for them. And so why does the Bible constantly keep saying, take no thought? Is because Adam takes thoughts. Adamic generation takes thought. But you and I are born from above. Born of God. And sons don't think, sons are led. And the reason I cast, when it says cast your care upon him, it says cast all your thoughts upon him because he is thinking for you, because he has already thought all things for you. And it says resist, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And even as you're casting those thoughts and not taking that thought, now you're humbling yourself and saying, that you know what, the reason I'm not going to think for myself and take the thought is because I'm not an orphan. The Gentiles seek all these things because the Gentiles were the ones without a heavenly father. The Gentiles were like the Adamic generation. But you and I come from a different generation. We are not from Adam. We are from Jesus. 
and because we're from him we are father we take no thought because he is thinking on your behalf for you he has already thought things for you and even as i don't take the thought i res the next line says resist the devil and he will flee so where do thoughts come from how did adam fall who gave him that thought adam thought for himself and that was the disobedience where he should have just followed his father's voice but because he went into thinking and looking out for himself oh let me make a decision for my own life apart from what my father says and he went into thinking he took someone else's thought and he fell and what is the trick that the devil is doing today so what does the verse after that say be sober be vigilant be sober means being calm and be collected have a presence of mind don't be sleeping that means be awake in all things be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour what is the meaning of devour who, who he may consume you know when you swallow something or when you gulp all things down it means devour okay he is looking for who he may de devour but the bible does not tell somebody in the new covenant after jesus has fought everything for you to fight anymore it simply says to resist the devil i have read in the new covenant and it doesn't talk about fighting it talks about standing it talks about resisting that means as sons your fight is to simply hold your position and not forget who you are not forget the position of victory so what is it saying he's coming to you but resist him that means don't fight him just withstand him withstand him that means someone is coming and it is resisting i was doing an exercise yesterday in the in the in the gym and i had a cart that i had to just push and someone else is pushing on the other side and i just had to resist it that means he is bringing some thoughts to me and now i'm resisting it i'm not becoming one with them so it says resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings and ex are experienced by your brother brotherhood in the world now see this verse 10 but may the god of all grace who called you, called us to his eternal glory by jesus christ after you have suffered a while that means you resisted perfect establish strengthen and settle you to him be glory and the dominion forever after you resist you're holding on to your position trust me you're taking dominion there you're settling there you're getting established there okay now we're going to go through some couple of verses uh and then again i'm going to bring back everything that i'm saying okay let's quickly go to philippians 4 where you know it talks about all your prayer requests right philippians philippians 4 now this is something that i'm doing i'm exercising this every day okay we are training for reigning sons it means we co labor with the holy spirit okay ephesians 4 verse 2 uh i'm on verse 4 okay ephesians 4 verse 4 now look at this rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice that means be glad be joyful in the lord always again i will say rejoice verse 5 let your gentleness be known to all men the lord is at hand now verse 6 now this is what happens you know when you get all your your prayer requests and you're concerned about something and then it says be anxious for nothing and then again i looked this up in greek and it says take no thought take no thought take no thought about anything so jesus in matthew 6 told his disciples do not worry and in greek it actually means just take no thoughts take no thoughts and now again it says here be anxious for nothing it's saying take no thought for anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request in greek it says demands or whatever you want be made known to god and then it says and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds to christ jesus so that means now he is saying i do not want you to take any thought stop worrying about your own life don't take the thought that means thoughts are coming and i don't want you to take any of these thoughts and meditate on them and churn on them and reason them he is giving us a specific command not to do don't take the thought and then he is saying after you don't take the thought 
just tell me what's in your heart what do you want and then it says just make known to me what you want don't take the thought but make known to me what you want and then there is a supernatural peace that is going to come and guard you even as you shut your mind off now look i am doing this when i was younger i used to subconsciously unknowingly doing this okay when i came into the kingdom as to call it blank days so my friends know that they would make fun of me okay on those days i would, I, would, i would call it a blank day because on that day i would just not think about anything it's a blank day i would just not think any thoughts ever come out just like resist it was just blank and i would just do blank days and recently i started doing that because i would see like where my mind is going and i would be like how is my mind just going into you know arguments and things like that and i would just shut it and i would just say take no thought take no thought and it's, it's almost like something was pulling me into get into reasoning and let's analyze this and i would just be like shut it i would shut the door and just say no sons don't think i take no thought and even as i started doing this i started seeing a supernatural peace that would just guard my heart and my mind you know when you see that word heart and mind in the greek it's the same thing it's guarding my mind it's that helmet of salvation this is a very important truth because all the chaos that's actually going on in your life no is here and even as you shut this off you don't need to think for yourself you're humbling yourself because you're literally saying i'm not going to think for my life and the reason i'm not going to think is because somebody else has already thought for me and i've realized there are some areas in my life like money i've never ever been concerned about money never just never did it and i've realized i've always had a supernatural flow somehow i'm at the right place at the right time and someone comes and does or like i get a project and i'm doing things it's because i never thought for myself but in some other areas i just keep thinking and that's the where i have to humble myself and take no thought like as if i want to father myself without and and seeing myself as an orphan and that self righteousness okay the bible tells us when it says be anxious for nothing it says take no thought and the father is saying if you take no thought first take no thought and now tell me what's in your heart and this supernatural peace is going to guard you okay now let's go to uh 2 corinthians 10 so now he's telling us don't take any thoughts and now he tells us to do something okay okay this is the place of spiritual warfare right so now let's look at this 2 corinthians 10 verse 3 for though we walk in the flesh that means we live in this world okay you live in the world where there are let's just say there are atoms in a generation okay though we live in this world in this world in this earth we do not war according to the flesh that means you you have your 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 seeing certain things what you're seeing your you hear what you taste though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds stronghold a fortress okay now see this casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled i meditated on this whole verse for a few hours today just this i was looking every word in greek you know what this means now let me just break it up for you okay for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal that means something that you can understand with your head but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments you know what is this word for arguments this is casting down every reasoning reasoning calculative reasoning that your mind is going on doing every speculation that means oh i have some symptoms in my body what could this be could this be a tumor could this be malignant could this be you know something like a sickness oh what is going to happen tomorrow if my boss finds out and am, am i going to get fired and it's talking about imaginations speculation that means you're just speculating that word means conception that means you're just conceiving something it's not even there but you're just going on processing things it means okay imaginations it means personal opinions personal opinions that means it's just your view 
it doesn't align with God's word. And so it's saying casting, casting down arguments and every high thing that is exalting itself against the knowledge of God. You know what that means? That means this thought is coming into yourself and whatever that thought might have fear. That was the same thought that came to Adam. It exalted itself against the knowledge of what God had spoken to him. And he didn't take it down. Okay. He did not pull that thought down. And so it's saying exalting itself against the knowledge of God and see what it tells you and me to do. Jesus said that in Matthew. Jesus said that in Philippians. Take no thought, take no thought. And now he's saying, bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The word thought here, it means in Greek, it reads mind. And bring your mind into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay? Being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled means if, if you are taking those thoughts and all of this is disobedience going on, it's exalting itself. And now you're pulling it down and bringing your mind into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And where is Christ? He's in you. That means all of these thoughts are coming to snare you. Like, come on, let's get into this conversation. Let's analyze about this whole situation. You haven't got a job for five months. Now let's process this. What does this mean? You're not a son. Or maybe it's something, look at, looking at yourself and getting you all down. And it could be in any, any situation. And so all of these thoughts come to draw you and to grab your attention. And then what is the father telling you to do? Bring your mind into captivity to the obedience of Christ in you. That means it is finished. It is finished. You don't go into that whole conversation. Just the way when people are sitting with you sometimes, and the Bible says, don't give your pearls to swine. That means people can be having a conversation, but not necessarily have to enter that conversation. Thoughts can be going on to your head, but you don't have to allow your attention to it. And even as you're not getting snared into it, like trapped into that whole conversation, you know what's happening? You're not becoming a slave to it. You're not becoming, you're not serving the mammon. And even as you shut it, God wouldn't tell you to do something if he didn't think it was possible for you to do it. I'm doing it for the past couple of days. I've done it before, but I forgot about it. And I just let my mind wander. I'd sit in the car and I just let my mind wander. And now suddenly I'm becoming conscious and it says, be vigilant, be sober-minded. That means it says, be awake every time. And so now even in my thoughts, I'm like, where's that mind going of mine? And I just shut it. I just shut it, whether it's good or bad. I don't go into the cycle of reasoning because it will lead to death. The Bible tells me, take no thought. So I don't take the thought. And God calls worry and thought the same thing. Do not worry means take no thought. He's calling it a care. So I do not take any cares is because somebody else, I do not take any thoughts is because somebody else is thinking for you, has already thought things for you. And it tells you to take those thoughts captive and bring it to the obedience of Christ in you. Okay? When you do that, guess what's happening now? The mind of the spirit will lead to life and peace. That's why he says, when you take no thought and when you ask the demand, tell me your demands, tell me your petition. And then the peace that passes all understanding is guarding you. It's supernatural. That's why it's the same thing of the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Same verse, just said in another way, in somewhere else. Okay, we are partakers of the tree of life. We don't need to think, we're not orphans. Somebody else has thought for you. When you were growing up, did you decide which school you're going to go? Did your parents decide the school for you? You were just being led into all things. And for a son, that leading has not stopped. We grow up, but we are still father's sons. And even as we're growing up, for us, the more and more you, you worry less about yourself, that's growing up. That's maturity for a son. is because your whole life is a finished work. Jesus never thought for himself. He's led into all things. He's one with him. And he walked into a finished work. When Pontius Pilate looked at him and said, do you not know I have power over you? you he said, looked at him and said, you have no power over me unless it has been given to you from above. 
when the, he needed supper, he just told his disciples, go ahead. There'll be someone carrying the pot on his head. Just follow him. There is already the supper prepared. When he needed the money, he just said, go to the fish. The first fish that comes up, open up its mouth, take it. He is walking ahead of something that is already prepared. And so sons, we're not thinking. The minute you get into reasoning and thinking, you're saying, I don't have a father. Or I need to think for myself. Sons don't think, sons are left. And in every verse, he's telling you, take no thought. Adam fell because he thought for himself. He should have just listened to what his father said. Because somebody else, his father had already thought things through for him. Okay? Now look at this in verse, let's take Ephesians chapter 6. So we talked about how in 2 Corinthians 10, it's talking about bringing every thought captivity. That means God is telling you, I want you to take your mind captive. That means wherever you see your mind is wandering, shut it off. It's easy. I started doing it. It's easy. The more you start training a muscle, after some time you have memory cells. You know what I mean? That means once you, you do something, you'll always remember it. Like if you start cycling, even if you didn't do it for 10 years and you start again, you'll just know how to cycle. You might just go waddle a little bit, but then you'll come back because you know it. And so even as you start doing this, he wouldn't tell you to do something if you didn't, didn't know it was possible. It's Christ in you doing everything. And so I started doing this and after some time it became, it became normal. Just the way for me, even if someone talks about sickness, everything in me, every cell in me will reject it. It's because when I say I'm resurrection and life, it's not just me saying it. Every cell in me is saying I'm resurrection and life. Just the way when Val used an example and he said, if I'm shaking Priya's hand, I'm not saying Priya's hand, hello. I'm just shaking Priya's hand and saying, because it's all of Priya. The hand is also Priya. So the same way when you're saying, I am resurrection and life, do you know that every cell in you will start believing that? So then if the sickness is coming here, every cell in you is saying, I'm resurrection and life. So life and death can't be together. It'll just repel. That's the way it is. Bring every thought captivity to the obedience of Christ. That means you've exalted yourself. You're in disobedience. Now the sun is back. Now I'm not going to think for myself. My father has thought things from me. And that's why the helmet, what does the helmet do on your head? Why do people wear it on the bike? It is to protect. So something is already protected. That means it's already finished. The helmet of salvation. It doesn't say the helmet of anything else. It's a salvation. Why does it use salvation? That means it is finished. It is done. All the thinking for your whole life, it is already thought through. And so can you humble yourself and not think? Because I have thought things for you. And then the devil is un, is, cannot devour you is because you're taking no care. Okay, let's look at this. That's, that's why I said the next, uh, resist the devil and he will flee. He's looking, he's giving cares to people and seeing who will take his cares. Okay, look at this in Ephesians 6.10. Let's look at Ephesians 6.10. Ephesians comes after Galatians. Okay, Ephesians. Ephesians 6.10. Okay, the armor of God. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now see this. Put on the whole armor of God. Okay, when it says put on the whole armor of God, that means just be conscious of who you are. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be that you may be able to fight against the wiles of the devil. What does it say? That you go to warfare against the, 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 the wiles of the devil, the tricks of the devil. It says that you may be able to stand. In the previous word, it says resist the devil. Don't fight. Resist. That you may be able to stand against the tricks of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Again, in Corinthians, we saw that we are not warring against flesh and blood, right? Against principalities, against powers, against arguments. All of this goes on here. So see this. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, withstand, resist, and having done all, to stand. That means you're only holding your position. Therefore, okay, 
Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Having girded your waist with truth. What does the waist belt do? It holds the pants together. It holds all the items together. It holds it together. Having girded your waist with truth. What is the truth today? What is every care and everything makes you question, oh, you are not a son. Or oh, look at this area of your life. It doesn't look like you're a son. That you are born from above. It questions who you are. Having girded your waist with truth about who you are. You're not becoming somebody. You're born. Everything in creation was made except the sun. You and I were not made. We are born from above. Every time a problem comes to you, please remember, you don't come from Adam anymore. The people who come from Adam will respond like Adam. And so the whole world can respond to a situation in a certain way. But you and I come from the second Adam born from above and so your response and my response should be like the second adam and the second adam is not fighting that is jesus the second adam only stands and rests in his position so look at this stand therefore having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness that i'm a son of his blood now it's no more under karmic cycle no more under sin consciousness Sin has been dealt with on the cross once and for all. It's taken away in the body of Jesus Christ. You and I are sons by blood now, born from above. Okay? And having shot your feet with the gospel of peace, having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that God is at peace with me. Reconciliation. Jesus came saying, come reconcile back to God. That means peace. Peace. God is not angry anymore. His anger has been dealt with in the body of Jesus. Okay? Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and taking the helmet of salvation. Now see this. Helmet of salvation. Salvation, that it is done. I stopped thinking for myself. Okay? And now what it says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Remember it says, take no thought, bring every thought into captivity. And what did Jesus do when the thoughts came? He spoke. I've realized anytime when thoughts come, <clears throat> and they're just like, just going on, going on. Okay? First, take no thought. But then I speak who I am. And you realize they just go away because it's the sword of the spirit. Okay, and taking and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Helmet of salvation and sword of the spirit. You speak. Let's go to Colossians. So we talked about the armor. Did it say about fighting or standing? Okay, and all the armor was just guarding who you are, your position. Now let's look at Colossians chapter 3. Set your mind on things above. So I used to always think set your mind on things above means talk about heaven, think about heavenly things, angels and things like that. But when the Bible tells you to set your mind on things above, it is not talking about things. It talk, it's talking about position. And we know that because of the verse after that what you read. So let's read this. Colossians chapter 3. Okay. If then you were raised with Christ. So is this talking about position? You were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. You know, when Jesus came and he was talking to his disciples and he was talking, looking at the Pharisees, he said, I am from above. You are of this world, but I'm not of this world. I am from above. In every conversation of him, with every trial that came his way. Now he's not going through a trial because he's above everything. He's a son of God. He's above everything that he created because the creator will always be greater than the creation. Okay. Anything that came his way, in everything, he sets his mind on things above. That means he does not forget from where he comes. 
So setting your mind on things above means simply not forgetting that you come from the second Adam. That you and I are not of this world. Just the way he said, I'm not of this world. I am from above. So he said, you are of this world. You are of this earth. But I am not of this earth. I am from above. And so the same way it says in all things, set your minds on things above means don't forget where you come from. Don't forget whose you are. Don't forget that your relationship is by blood. That don't forget that I'm not of this world, but I'm from another world. That's what it means. Set your mind on things above. Because the next verse says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That means Priya died. You can look at me, I look like a girl, but that's just if you're looking at me in a carnal way. But my spiritual identity, I'm one with him. It's all Christ in me. And that's the way I see myself. I saw this in a dream, right? I think I've shared it in the Untouchable series. Okay, when I saw, and I kept looking at Jesus, and I thought I met Jesus. But he had my eyes. He had my hair. He had some characteristics of me. He had my staff. And I, was, I thought for the longest time I met Jesus, and then I realized I looked at the new creation. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. I never saw me. It was all Christ. If me and Jesus got married and had a child, that's what I looked like, the child. The child is a perfect unit of two people. That's what I look like. I didn't see me. I saw him. And he wanted me to start seeing me like this. Set your mind on things above. That means now start seeing yourself from your spiritual identity. The eyes, your real eyes. And because you're not of this world, neither am I of this world. So you talk just like me. When Jesus, after he died and rose again, he could have just looked the same way, right? Why did he change? And then people who are hanging out with him on the road of Damascus, when he's talking to them, and then their hearts began to burn. And when they broke bread, they realized that it's him. Their eyes were open. And then even when Jesus meets after, you know, on the, the, the Sea of Galilee, I think, and it's where Peter's in the boat. And then after they have a big catch, he realizes it's God. He, it's Jesus at the shore. And he jumps up and goes to him. That means he didn't look like the same Jesus. He looked somebody else. Why? Is because the father now, Jesus wanted them to recognize him by his word. By knowing. That's why God, what Jesus looks like is not even mentioned in the Bible. In Revelation there is, of the glorified, but not the way he looks. Because he wants you to know him by his word. We are born of the word, spiritual identity. Man wants to make image of everything. A carnal understanding. Wants to look, feel, touch. You know, the word says, signs and wonders will follow us. I never pursued an encounter. Encounters pursued me. It's because the word was enough for me. He surprised me with things. I would get some fantastic things, but I never went looking for them. They came pursuing me. A son is secure in the word. That's maturity. Jesus also, he said, it is written. It is written. He resisted to the devil. And then it says that the devil left him. Okay? You and I don't think. Adam thinks. And Adam fell because he thought for himself. When it says don't worry, it means take no thought. Because somebody else has already thought for you. And that's why when those cares come to grab you and say, let's have a conversation. Let's get analyze this whole situation. And then, you know, you go over and over. It could be a situation that happened with your mother-in-law and what she said and what he said. And you want to go over this whole situation in your head. And that's when God is saying, come out of it. I don't want you to engage in that argument and even be a spectator there. Shut that door. And I'm not going to give it my attention. It's because somebody has already thought I have this helmet of salvation. I'm not going to see how things are going to work out for me. It's because my life is a finished work. The Gentiles do that. Adam generation does that. I am father. And so my life is all father. And so I'm just going to rest. And even as I'm learning, enjoying joy, peace, all of the fruits of the spirit, I'm choosing these You'll realize how everything is in a tailor-made. You'll just be led into things. Right place, right time. Okay? Let's look at um, let's look at Philippians chapter 4 again. And it talks about what you should meditate on. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians comes after... Hmm. Wait to the end. 
Okay, Philippines comes up with Egypt. Okay, so we talked about being anxious for nothing, right? Because God says, don't be anxious, that means take no thought. Now it tells about what I do want you to meditate on and what I am thinking for you. You know, in, uh, in the Old Testament, God says, the thoughts that I have for you are more than the sands of the sea. The plans that I have for you are better than yours. And he's already in the old, he's already telling that I've already thought all of these things for you. Okay? How much more now that you are a, you're a son in the kingdom? Look at this, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, that means if it just matches the word, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, you know, in Isaiah, it says, Jesus says, Isaiah 53, uh, I think it's Isaiah. Yeah. Who has believed our report? Who has believed my report? Hear the sermon on good report, okay, that I've said. Who has believed my report? And then it talks about Jesus dying on the cross, right? He, he died for your griefs. He died for your sorrows. By his stripes, you're healed. If Jesus took something away, you don't have to take it. Because somebody else has taken it for you. That's why even if grief comes knocking on your door, it sounds, it sounds sometimes, you know, like people go and like console somebody, right? But see, I've seen a spiritual truth here, okay? If he took the grief and the sorrow, like my dad passed away, but I never had grief or sorrow. I can't explain it. It's supernatural. But it never came. It's because I'm a life-giving spirit and I knew certain things. Like I knew that he was, I'm going to meet him again. He's with Christ and everything. But I never had grief or sorrow. And don't allow grief and sorrow to come knocking on your door. You resist it because Jesus took for it. I told you how Andrew Womack, when his son died and God had already spoken like what he's going to do in his life and things like that. When his son died, when grief and sorrow came knocking on his door, he resisted it. And he just began to praise God and sing and enjoy. And he said, I don't care. Even if my son has gone, I'm not going to let this affect me. I'm not going to get into depression. And even as he resisted it, it was five hours since he heard about his son died and he's going to that city in which he met with an accident or whatever he died. And his son, after five hours, gets up in the, in the morgue, sits up and he comes back to life. And there's a spiritual truth because he did not, grief and sorrow has been taken with in the body of Christ. And it led to resurrection. Think about it when Lazarus died and grief and sorrow came. And then what did Jesus do? He told them, why are you becoming one with that grief and sorrow? If you want to see resurrection in certain things, you need to shut that door on grief and sorrow. And even as he didn't allow, he put all those people out. In another verse also, right? Where he, lived, uh, he woke a girl up. But even as he shut that door and he put the mourners out or he went to that grave and he, he didn't look at everyone crying and he didn't become one with their sorrow and he's not going and comforting people. And then he goes and says, Lazarus, come forth. I am resurrection and life. So are you. Start saying that about you. Adam dies. Jesus doesn't. Jesus said, I am resurrection and life. That's your identity. Now pick one. Either you're of the Adam, then you're going to see things like Adam. But if you set your minds on things above, second Adam, you will see things of second Adam. Christ, born from above. Don't have a mixed identity. That's why it says someone who's double-minded doesn't receive. Double-minded means not about the things, about who you are. Double, don't be double-minded about who you are. I come from the second Adam. I react like the second Adam. And how does the second Adam react? How does Christ react? He doesn't react in most things. He just doesn't react. He's not impulsive. He waits. He's patient. Because you and I are in Christ. We are a king that rules through sitting, by resting. Don't give your high ground. That is already won. You know, recently I had a dream. Uh, and as I was reading today, I saw that. I saw myself a few years ago before Beloved started, okay? But I had this dream in which I was taken. I was at the peak of a mountain. And I heard upward, upward. So you know when it says set your minds on things above? Do you know in Greek it translates as upward? And I didn't even know, but I saw this in a dream. And God said, I want you to see upward. And I saw a generation that was looking towards the earth. You know, you can be on a tie tall high-rise building. If you look down, you'll feel dizzy. But if you look up, you won't. And so in this dream, I'm looking up and God wanted me to see up. 
and the more i had my vision on top everything was fine but the minute i began to look down i was getting dizzy and then he just said look upward that means he was telling me where i come from and not to be double minded about two things we are a generation you and i are born from above set your mind on things above means of your position and not forgetting who you are in every circumstances you're not of the earth you're a son of god and you start doing that in small things trust me dominion comes about what did we read there how did dominion come about after you've resisted it says now god will establish you settle you and then comes for dominion dominion is something you take small by small i told you in one of the sermons the united kingdom when they were ruling they ruled even america they didn't just begin to rule they, how did they start ruling they started taking small territories small 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 and then they became so big that the very word of the british people would shiver and that's the way you and i are and you start taking your ground in small things that come your way and you even those small thoughts and the spiritual realm knows man this person just doesn't let me engage i send thoughts and they just don't entertain my thoughts and now you're taking ground and then next thing you just enter a room and the demon flees or you enter a room and the cancer goes is because the spiritual realm knows how you walk in the small things it fears you already and then someone is saying i'm a son of god i'm a son of god and they tell me i'm saying i'm a son of god i'm a son of god nothing is happening yeah it doesn't work like that you have to take it in the small things okay let's read the last scripture okay meditate on things about right finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are hope, noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things meditate that means give your attention to these things the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me these do and the god of peace will be with you can you see that peace follows everywhere i read you three scriptures i said when it says don't take any thoughts don't be anxious about anything and then it says the peace will follow then again it says set your mind on things above and then it says the peace will follow and now again it says meditate on these things that means if give your attention to your position give your attention to god's word and who you are and peace is going to follow and this peace is supernatural peace there is an understanding that comes from carnal mind carnal reasoning and so a lot of people sometimes want to understand certain things and i i refuse like that's why sometimes when people sit with me for theology or things like that i don't want to engage in it is because it it's an understanding that comes from the carnal mind see adam went into some sort of reasoning and understanding okay that came out of a carnal understanding he had to just listen to his father because his father had thought things through for him but he chose to be his own father he chose to to be his own savior let's just say that to make decisions for him to think for himself and through the understanding and the conclusion that his mind came up through that he partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and it led to death and when it tells you in 2 corinthians it says take the thought captive those that word thought it means please bring your mind into captivity now to your spirit man to who you are don't just allow your head to just go here and there to thinking and analyze and speculation and personal opinions because it is disobedience now to christ in you it's exalting itself and saying i want to think for you and you say no nope, i'm sorry this tree is dead and gone i give you no place for me my whole life is thought true and can you see this helmet helmet on my head it's it says helmet of salvation what does salvation mean saved it is finished that's what it means my whole life has been figured out i have the mind of christ and the mind of christ is complete and so i'm putting this into practice okay i've been doing this for a few days like whenever i see my mind is engaging i just come out i don't go into analyzing anything i know that galatians 220 is true for me and for you if you're born from above if you're a son if you believe in christ and you are a son and our whole lives have been thought through you died it's all christ in you and everything exalts and says no it's not christ and that's where you need to bring it down i'm led into all things you know i went to singapore for a trip once and it was almost i my cousin came with me and she thought that i planned the whole trip and anyone who hangs out with me knows that i don't really plan as such like i just like to go and figure things out there 
And so I went on this trip and my cousin wanted to go to one place and second place and third place. And literally guys, I got lost in one. At some point I felt like sitting down and suddenly as I sat down and just waited for an hour, suddenly there was a whole water show going on in front of me. And it was almost at the end of the trip, it was almost like someone had, you know, when you have an itinerary or a travel agent writes an old itinerary and gives you for all the places that you should visit. It was almost like the father had done everything out for me and had gone to all of those things. And I didn't think for myself, someone had already thought it for me. And where I thought I'm getting lost and I'm sitting and I'm, oh, I just took too much time here. It was all processed, it was all done and figured out for me. And so you think it's you. Your mind doesn't need, God doesn't need your mind anymore. Maybe for some mathematics, but he doesn't need your mind. You are led. That means everything will be inside out. And what is the meaning of leading? Don't ask me that. If you're watching, you're already led. If you're having coffee, it's father having coffee. Now don't let your mind say, oh, what is this? If you're having a glass of wine, it's the father having. If you're going horseback riding, it's the father going horseback riding. It's Christ in you doing that. If you're driving a car, it's Christ in you. He's doing all of that. You're being led into all things. You have one heart. The new covenant says, the minute you get born from above, in Ezekiel, it says, I'll give them one heart and I will write on their hearts and I will cause them. So if he's causing you, where does the mind come in? In fact, he wants you to shut your mind. And that's why sometimes he has to speak to you when you go to sleep because your mind is shut. And then he can tell you some things. Okay. In all things, it says, be awake and take the thought. So cares and worry has got to do with thoughts. And he says, I do not want you to think. And even as you don't think for yourself, you're humbling yourself now. And I'm going to give you grace is because now you're saying the reason I choose not to think about this area is because you've already thought things through for me. That's what it means. Casting all your cares because he cares for you. I'm not taking, and I'm bringing all of those thoughts into obedience of Christ. That means it's already finished. I'm not entertaining this whole conversation that's going on in my mind. These speculations, these personal opinions, these fears, and just random reasoning. I shut it out, bring it to the obedience of Christ, and that's how the obedience of Christ is fulfilled. Okay? So I want, you to, I want us to close today and do this as an exercise. Sons don't think, sons are led. The minute you find yourself analyzing and reasoning, shut it. Shut your mind. Shut it. It says, bring your mind into captivity. Okay? Take no thought. Just say that over yourself. Take no thought. If you catch yourself thinking, free up. Take no thought. Take no thought. Say, I'm not going to entertain this. I'm not going to get into this conversation. Shut yourself and you'll realize it leads to peace. And it's not got to do with your human understanding. I told you, Adam also reasons and has an understanding. But we live by the spirit of understanding. And you know what the spirit of understanding is? You'll just know. There is a knowing that will be, be given to you and then it comes from inside out. And then your mind catches up to it. Like when I, I, when I saw myself as a new creation, it was a spiritual understanding given. Then my mind may have caught up to it, but it was a spiritual understanding. And we, we live like that. Okay? It's alive in you. So don't try and reason. That's why sometimes I tell people, just hear the word. Just hear the word. And they say, I don't understand some of the things you say. And I say, I don't need you. I, in fact, I need you to shut your brain down. I don't need this carnal understanding because it will still lead to death. I want, to, I want you to see what the word does in you. And then they just keep hearing. They keep hearing. And then suddenly they see a shift in their life. And they'll tell me, I don't know, but I heard you. Or I heard these teachings. And now suddenly I saw myself into a blessing, a shift. It's because I don't need your mind. It's the spirit of understanding. And now everything in you just knows that you're a son of his blood. You're born from above. And your mind might catch up to it, but I don't need your mind. A son is lit. Okay? And it's an experience. You'll experience it. So let's just close today. In um, <clears throat> Let's give a spiritual time. Okay? Just say this after me. It's a thanksgiving of all the revelation that you heard today, of all the understanding that came to the spirit of understanding. Okay? Just say, Father, I'm a son in your kingdom. Jesus, you're my high priest. And right now, I give you a tithe of all the increase that you gave to me right now. And just worship him. Thank him for all of the increase. And he's just going to multiply to you.
Father, I thank you that I'm just like Jesus, that I'm born of you. I thank you that my whole life is thought through by you. I thank you that I don't need to think. I cast all my cares. I cast all my thoughts because you are thinking on my behalf, because you are thinking for me, because you have thought all things for me. I enjoy, I choose joy. I choose, I choose to be happy. I choose joy because that is my portion. That is the portion for a son. I thank you, Father. And we rest, we stand in the victory that you've already given us. I thank you for the helmet of salvation, that it is done, it is finished. And from now on, we bring every thought and our mind into captivity to the obedience of Christ in us. That means, Father, that you've already thought things for us. I just thank you for rest. We just thank you that you're so good. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen.